everyone is doing okay out there and I hope you're all wearing masks to protect both yourself and your community. Here in Asia, almost universal mask compliance is a key part of beating this. Another thing almost every Asian country does, which is a bit controversial in the West, is thermal screening. You saw me cover this in my review of the Unity third camera. To recap, basically the idea is if you're wanting a high fever, whether it's COVID or not, you probably should not be in a, an enclosed space spreading whatever you might have to lots of other people. If you have a fever, do everyone a favor, be considerate and stay home. The goal of fever screening isn't to reduce the number of infectious people in a given space to zero. You'll never do that as long as there are asymptomatic carriers, but just to reduce the number. Five people shedding virus inside a Walmart will pass the infection on to fewer people than 20 people shedding virus. By making sure people with a high fever don't enter clouded public spaces and are sent for proper testing, you can reduce the number of people they pass on that infection to. This has worked very well here. As we also covered earlier in my review of the well-low pulse oximeters, silent hypoxia, or low blood oxygen levels without any symptoms can also be an indicator that someone has been infected and will need early medical intervention. Because of this, a few businesses are using blood oxygen levels to screen employees along with thermal screening. Of course, it's just a guess. There hasn't been time for proper studies on this screening method. But if doctors decide this is a good idea, I thought it best to work with my friends over at JLCPCB to have some open source hardware ready for them to use. What I decided to make was a combination thermometer and SPO2 sensor built onto a single PCB. So let me show you how ordering that from JLCPCB works once we have our design. Okay, first let's add our Gerbil file on the JLCPCB interface. And it takes a few minutes to process the Gerbil files and um, it has to make sure it's all right. So please be patient. Okay, it detected four layer board. Let's scroll down and let's select SMT uh, assembly. With the SMT assembly service, I don't have to sort out the component myself anymore. They will just add it on the PCB board for me. I know you guys want to see it, but it's kind of boring for me. Let's add the build of this BOM file and the CBL file. Okay, all these components, little tiny SMT components are going to be used on our PCB board. Next, I'm going to review the parts placement, where it's going to go. And you can track, you can just track it on their website. Looks, looks good. All those selected parts are from their LCSC store. So once you upload the file, and then uh, it will show what parts you have selected. Let's say to card. All right, only $88 for a prototype board. Let's do it. And a read later, I got this. I just need to make an enclosure for this so I don't short any contacts out during testing. I'm going to do that with my laser cutter. Let's turn on this. Now, like all these little devices I made with JLCPCB, this is a proof of concept, a development board so that people who want to research this have some hardware to start with. It's not a final product and I'm not stressing places implement screening with this. Those are decisions best made by healthcare professionals. But an automated way of quickly determining which people are more likely to be ill and so should be tested as a priority is just a good idea to have as an option.
Okay, almost. I'm just going to hook this up to the sample door I got from the local showroom that was going to throw it out. And I finally printed this little button, it's fairly simple, you just pop it right in the square. Oh, all right, voila! A few things. I really wish there was a way to test SpO2 without touching the sensor. Honestly, cleaning that and cleaning fingers is going to slow things way down. It's really the weakest part of this setup because you don't want to create a situation where this could be spreading infection. A built-in UV light might be an option, certainly some nearby hand sanitizer. The temperature sensor worked well. The wrist is an approved location for thermal screening, but you do have to program in the offset because it is a bit cooler than foreheads. There's no problem though. Overall, it's always good to work with my sponsors at JLCPCB on rapid prototyping projects like this. And if you have an idea, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.